So uh, I gave you a bunch of practice problems. I sent the answers to you today, so you have the answers in the PDF format. But I'm going to go ahead and throw and go through these with you, and then post this. Uh, use a diagram to answer questions A, B, and C. What is the solute concentration of beaker A? Anybody? Say, say that again. Zero. It's zero percent. Why is it zero percent? Because it's a hundred percent water. Something's 100%, that means it can't be anything else. Is there anyone else here? Let me pause this. All right. What is the solvent concentration of beaker C? That's right, 60. So these are kind of simple calculation questions you should be able to do at the top of your head. If, it's, if something is 40%, is Sugar has to be 60% water. If it's 100% water, it has to be 0% solute, etc. What should, what would the solute uh, the solvent concentration be for the solution that is isotonic to beaker B? The solvent concentration something is isotonic. So you have another solution, that's 90, correct, that's right, it would be 90%. That was a trick question, wasn't it, in a way? It really wasn't a trick question, it was just to see, if they, they want to see if you're paying attention, because they didn't ask you for the solute concentration, they wanted the solvent concentration for a solution, some solution, not even drawn for you, that they requested that information for. Of course, this is 10%, I hope everyone knows. All right. What is the solution? Do I have any questions about that? I see no questions. Very good. What is the solution in this example? Hypotonic, uh, hypertonic, or isotonic? Who can answer that? Hypertonic. Hypertonic. Everybody agree? I see questions in people's eyes. What questions do you have? People, tomorrow's the test. If you're not asking a question now, you're getting it wrong tomorrow. Yes, go ahead. I thought it would be isotonic. You thought it would be isotonic? Okay, so what is isotonic to you? All right, so this is 30% sugar inside, and this is 70% sugar outside. So how could that be isotonic? So like, like, oh, I see. Did you think that because it's 30%, 30% water? Is that what you're thinking? What, I mean, I'm just trying to figure out what you were thinking so we don't make that mistake on the test, right? That's the whole point. It's good that you're wrong now because you don't want to be wrong tomorrow. That's the objective. So I guess one, I'll just go ahead and, and say that the only way I could see someone saying that, they're, that this, these two are isotonic is you saw 30% and 30%, you thought 70 and 70. But you have to be careful for a couple of reasons. Number one, when something says hypotonic, they're talking about the solute concentration. So you're looking at the sugar in this case. Okay? The other thing is that the other, the, other, the other consideration is that when you're comparing apples, you should compare them to apples and not oranges, right? So if I'm looking at 30% sugar, then I should be looking at 70% sugar, not the water, right? So make sure if you're going to compare inside to outside that you're comparing water to water and solute to solute. Does that make sense? A lot of quiet out there. Yeah? Um, I'll go. Osmosis is when, like, two of them move, and, I mean, it's when just water moves. And Osmosis is the diffusion of water. When water moves from its high to its low, it's high, not the solute's high, right? When the solutes are able to move, they're going to move from their high to their low, along their concentration gradients. So that's diffusion. Diffusion, that's right. Now, osmosis is when water moves. Excellent. What is the solution in this example? Okay, so we already identified it's what? In this solution, what is the, what is the solution? 
hypertonic, we've identified that. Why? Because it's 70% and this is the high. When it's high outside, it's hypertonic. All right, the next question is, how do you know? Well, we identified that, right? It's high solute outside, low inside. Describe exactly what's going to happen in the cell in this example. Let's assume sugar cannot pass. In fact, it says this membrane is permeable to water but not sugar. See how they say that? Why do they say that? That's right, excellent. They, they tell you that because that way you know osmosis is going to occur. There's no question. You see how this is phrased? This is very similar to almost every question you're going to get in osmosis and diffusion. It's not going to be as tricky as some of the ones that we did for our practice last week. This is going to be very, very simple. Hypertonic outside, uh, hypotonic inside, right? So this is a hypertonic solution. So in which direction will water move? There's three ways to think about it, isn't there? We talked about three ways to talk about it. If the solute can't move... Go ahead. Right, water's going to move the opposite way the solute would move if it could. And so the solute is high outside, it would go in, it can't, so water is going to move out. Very good. Now, see how easy it is when I say it with you. Tomorrow on the test, you have to be to the point where you're doing this on your own. Well, what's the other way of thinking of it? What's another way? There's three ways I taught you. What's another way you know water's going to move out? I'll wait. And the test is tomorrow. Yeah. Very good. It moves from high to low based on the water concentration. Water is seventy percent inside. Water is thirty percent outside. So water is going to move from high to low. And the last way is if it's hypertonic, water moves out. Those are the three ways we talked about in class about how you would know in which direction water is going to move. So ultimately, what's going to happen to the cell? Water's going to move out, and what's happening to the cell? It will shrivel. It will shrivel or shrink, and we call it plasmolysis. If it goes all the way to, to death. Let's go to the next question, then. The cell in this beaker is bathed in 5% sodium chloride solution. The membrane is permeable to water, but not sodium chloride. There again, they always give you that, don't they? They always tell you what's that. That's what you need to know. You need to know this so that you can make decisions on what's moving. Because that's really one of your first questions, is what's moving? Is the water moving? Is, is the solute moving? What's going on? In which direction is the net movement of water here? Someone said, uh, yeah. yeah, I agree. And how do you know? It, that's right. It's hypertonic, and that's a real good way of knowing it. It works as long as you remember it. If it's hypertonic outside, the water's moving out. Another way is if the solute concentration would move in. If it could move in, it would move in, but it can't, so water's moving out. And the last, of course, is that the water concentration inside is, is hard. I don't care which one. You don't have to know all three. You just have to know one of those and know it well so you can apply it certainly tomorrow and hopefully in May. That's it. Uh, how will this affect the cell? Shrivel. It'll shrivel. Yeah. Right? Everybody good with that? Mm -hmm. All right. YouTube is divided into two halves. The first YouTube. A and side B by a membrane which is freely permeable to water and salt. So it gets salt, comes and goes in, no problem, but not glucose. And that's really important. Not glucose. Side A is filled with 8% uh, salt, 2% glucose. Side B is 2% salt and 8% glucose. In terms of glucose concentration, which side is a high... See, do you see what they did? In terms of glucose concentration, so what are you worried about? 
okay? So glucose is 2%, glucose is 8%. Which side's hypotonic? Why do we worry about glucose and not, when we're talking about hypertonic and hypotonic, why don't we worry about salt? Because the salt is permeable and it travels back and forth, and because glucose is not permeable, so what's going to happen because glucose is not permeable? It'll stay. It'll, it won't move. It won't move, and then what has to move? Water. 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 You guys are getting it, see? You got it. You're going to be able to ace this if you if you keep your mind straight and, and, and think about the problems correctly. Yeah? So with the salt Yeah, I mean, the exact percentages, I, I'm not, let's not talk about how to get to that number, but it, they'll be even on both sides, right? This one will come down, and this one will go up until you get something that's half and half. I would say probably 4%, 4%, something like that. I don't know. Because it depends on the volume, and it depends on a lot of other things. Uh, but let's just, just for argument's sake, just think about it, that they even... There's going to be an even percentage on both sides. Is that fair? I don't want you to focus on these numbers. I'm making these numbers up because I don't want to get into, well, what's the volume on both sides? If you have this much volume, what's it going to take to equilibrate on both sides? Yeah. Yeah, go to restroom. All right, go to the office. I'm sorry. All right. So 4% for us. So let's go through here. Um, so which side, in terms of glucose, is hypotonic? Side B, side B is hypotonic. Oh, I'm sorry. You think side B is hypotonic. Is that what I hear someone saying? What does hypotonic mean? Less than what? Than the other side. And most of the time, it's the cell. So it's most of the time inside and outside. But in this side, in this case, it's not inside or outside. It's either side A or side B. All right. So side, one side's low, the other side's high. So high would be hypertonic, and low is hypotonic. So which, or it, or is it isotonic? You know, I don't know. In this case, is is it isotonic? No. For glucose. Not for glucose, because you have 8% here, 2% here. And that's what we're worried about when we're talking about osmosis. So which side is hypotonic? Side A. Side A. Do you see that? Does everybody see that? Again, excellent that we're saying things out loud, that we're getting things wrong. Please get it wrong today. So what does that make the other side? Hypertonic. So... Again, using the same, wow, using the same, uh, the same rules. Which way? Which direction is water moving? Can we turn the music off? Thank you. Hi. Uh, so, where's which way is the water moving? To the left. To the left. It's towards side B or towards side A. Towards side B. Towards side B. Why? The three rule. That's right. It's going, to, it's going to go toward. So there's three ways we can do it again. I'm going to say it. it's going to go towards the higher or the hypertonic, right? Just like the cell. Look at. Let's look at the example here. This side was hypertonic. The water moved up. Water always moves towards the hypertonic. So we can do it that way. We could. We could do it another way. We can think of it. We can think of it as. I said earlier, if this is 8% glucose, what percent water is it? 93% water. And what 2% glucose means what? 98% water. And so you can think of it as if you don't remember, wait, hypertech, which was water move? Oh, I'm confused. So it goes from, it's going to move from its high to its low, from 98 to 92, right? So you can think of it that way, or you can think of it, well, glucose could move, it would move towards the left, but it can't, so it has to go to the opposite direction. Question, oh, question, then question, then question, go. All right, so after you figure out, like, which side is hypotonic and hypertonic, you can tell which way the water's going to diffuse? Yeah. Okay, so then they'll always... All you got to know, it's always going to do one of those three things, right? I'm gonna, I, I, 
I don't know how, I mean, I, I wonder why, uh, what I'm saying, I'm wondering what's confusing about it. So there's three ways of thinking about it. The first way, which I think is the longest way, but whatever. If uh, water will move in the direction the solute, I'm sorry, in the opposite direction. So the water will move in the opposite direction that the solute would move if it could. The solute's 8%, it would move towards the left, it can't. So water moves in the opposite direction. That's it. So that's the most crazy way, but I, I like it, even though it's a little longer. Two, uh, the easy way is water moves toward the hypertonic solution side. Now, that's true, but and it's easy, right? But you got to remember what? And something that some people in this room today, the day before the test, I heard three people get this reversed. So you need to be sure that you know what hypertonic means and what hypotonic means. Because if you misidentify them, you got it exactly wrong, don't you? Right? It's two choices, right or left, or not at all, three, I guess. And if you get, if you get isotonic, hypertonic, and hypotonic mixed up, you're going to get this wrong. Hold on a second. I see your hand. Just hold on to it right there. Wash them down. The third one is... The water diffuses along its own concentration gradient. From its high to it's low. I mean, that's it. So those are three ways. I don't care which one of those ways you choose to try to memorize. The only thing I care about is you get it right. Yes? So why did you cancel the salt out for the water calculation? It's a really good question. Because the solute's going to, these two are going to equilibrate. They're going to come to equal. You see that? They're going to, they're going to, they're going to move from high to low. How come they're going to move from high to low? And the sugar won't. Because it's permeable to sugar. I mean, to salt. All right? And so, in order to... If, if it's permeable, the, the solute's going to move. If it's permeable, the, if it can, the solute's going to go from high to low. Where is, this, where is the salt going to go? It's going to go from 8% to 2%. Until what? Until it reaches 4%. Then it's going to keep going back and forth. Will it actually get to 4%? Will it be 2 and 2 or 5 and 5? I don't know. Whatever it is, it's going to be moving back and forth between the two sides. And they'll be even. So if they're even, then it's, that's not going to be part of our concern, is it? So you're right. If I really wanted to get technical, right, I'd have to say it's 4 plus, I'd have to say 4, right, plus 8. Is that correct? Let's see if it makes a difference. So if I, if I say, if I say, after I equilibrate, will it make a difference? Let's see. Four plus eight is what? Is what? Twelve. Twelve. A uh, hundred minus twelve. Eighty-eight. You say? All right. 
So that's on this side, 88% water. And what about the other side? 4 and 8. 4 and 2 is, is what? 6. 100 minus 6. 94% water. Is this, for water, does, did it make a difference? Hypertonic or hypotonic? No, it didn't. And why didn't it make a difference? It didn't make a difference because the salt was the same on both sides. What was the only thing that was different on both sides? The glucose, the glucose is the only thing different. Make sense? Yeah. So we should, so whichever one's permeable, we should diffuse it I would go ahead and diffuse it evenly first. And just, just to make sure you get it right. If you get a problem like this, make sure it goes even first. And then worry about the one that doesn't get even. Make, this is a system, right? So make sure your system is, is, is settled. You got all your... It's those little factors that you, that you don't tie up. Those loose ends that end up tripping you up. Yeah? So it always goes from hypotonic to hypotonic? Yeah. Water is always going to go from its high to its low. All right. It's high. Remember, I'm saying it's high. It's a very, there's two things you have to consider, solute and solvent. We good? But wait, no. If it goes from hypotonic, I thought hypotonic is lower than hypotonic. Yeah. High, but it's, it's, it's the subtleties. I, it's, I, I know. I know. I hear, I hear the error. I hear, I just, I don't know if I'm communicating, I don't know why I'm not communicating it clearly. But water, it's going to move from its high, water's high, to water's low, right? So you're right, this is low. So hypotonic means it's low glucose, and hypertonic means it's high glucose. But where it's low glucose, it's what? High water. And where it's high solute or hypertonic, it's in low water. So water always moves toward, again, one of those three, right? One of these three. So you gotta, you gotta choose, you gotta choose, pick your poison. Which one do you want to try to have to work on memorizing? You need to know one of these three. That's why I gave you these practice problems. All right, the solutions. As I went, notice that the levels of, a li of liquid in both A and B are not are equal. Oh, that's a good point. That's a good question. I like that because they, they do like to ask this question. This is a famous question. I mean, you'll see it every time you see osmosis. Somebody will love to put the YouTube in there. So you see how they're even? And is it going to be even once the water, once the osmosis is done? And which side's going to be high? The hypotonic side. The hypertonic side's going to be higher. Because water's going to move in which direction? To the right. To the right. Towards a higher concentration of solid. So it's your water's going to go up on that side and down on the left, and that's it. We good? All right. Solutions in the arms of the YouTube on the right are separated by selectively permeable membrane that is permeable to water and solute A, and solute, solute A but not solute B. So not solute B. Let me do this. But it is permeable to water and A. Forty grams of solute A, so folly, uh, and twenty grams of solute B have been added to the water on side one. So forty grams and twenty grams uh, B, and so what is that? All right, so that's that, and So you 20 grams of solute A and 40 grams of 20 of A and 40 of B have been added to site 2 of the YouTube. Assume that after a period of time, equilibrium is reached. Okay, so now, do you see that? Did you? I know somebody was asking me about this earlier. What did it say? After, assume after some period of time, equilibrium has been reached. What does that mean? That's right. So what are we, what's going to move? What is going to move? 
A is A and B are going to move? No. No, A and water. A and water are going to move. It's the only two things. B will not move. But we will reach equilibrium. Homeostasis will occur. Dynamic equilibrium will occur. So A can move. So what's going to happen to A? It's going to equal out to about 30 each, right? The problem is it's not in percent, so you're going to have, it's, it's kind of arguable if you can figure out what water is. So, it's going to, let's say, and we don't know the numbers, but let's go ahead and say that A, it, it gets, ends up being, what, uh, 33 each? Okay, I'll go with that. Is everybody all right with that? 33 grams on each side? All right, I've saw you. Then B can't move, so what's going to happen? And let's assume a liter of water, that's all we can do, 20 grams per liter on one side, what's it going to be on the other? In the end, what's, the concentrations will have to be equal. So water's going to move in which direction? Which is which side? Side two. Side two. So it's going to move towards side two, is right. It's going to move in that direction. Is everybody okay with that? How many grams of solute A will be in solution one? Well, we just said, so let's just assume that uh, A is going to be something around 33 grams. And how many grams of A, solute A will be inside two? 33 grams are going to be equal. And they will be equal. What, how many grams of salt B, side B, and, and the, it's going to be the same grams, aren't they? So this is still 20 grams and 40 grams. Does that make sense? Because they never changed. The amount, don't go to sleep, because this is a review for the test, and the test is tomorrow. So don't go to sleep, especially if you confuse some of the other stuff. You're falling asleep, we're going through the answers, I don't know what else to say. You should have done this for homework. Explain your answers in questions D and E. This would stay the same because they don't move. Because it's not permeable. The grams would stay the same. But what's going to change? The water. The, the water. So the percent solute will change. Even though the total grams won't. So that's M. What happened at the water level in YouTube? Which way, and what happened to the water level? And went to the right. The right side will go up and the left side will go down. Are we good with that? So that was a kind of that was definitely a trick question. A lot of kids asked this question. If you were asked this question today, if the test was today, a lot of you would have said side one would go down and side two would go up in so, in B concentration. In B. The grams of B would go would go uh, up and the grams in A uh, B would go down on side two. You would have said that because you would have thought the concentration, you would have thought the percent. You'd be right if it was percent, but it's not percent, it's grams. Does that make sense? So the total mass does not change, it's the concentration that changes there. Very tricky. Flask XYZ contains solutions of different concentrations of solute sodium chloride. Flask X has 0.5% NaCl. Flask Y has 0.9% NaCl. Flask Z has 1.5 NaCl. Red blood cells have 0.98 NaCl. Will be placed into each flask. Predicts what will happen. So do you, what do you do? How are you going to answer a question like this? Draw it out. You have to draw it out. You have to write it in. If you don't, you're not going to understand what's going on. And people will say, oh, you don't know. It just tells me you didn't do the homework. I can't possibly think you, didn't, you actually sat down and tried to figure this out and, and didn't get this. So Flask, Flask uh, X has 0.5% NaCl. 
percent. And let me just let me zoom in. Point five percent NACL. And then what does it say? Uh, where uh, red blood cell, what does a red blood cell have? 0.9. So in every case, the cells have, the cell has 0.9. So really the only thing that's changing is the solution, right? You see it? Because it tells you, it tells you it's all 0.9. So the second one, uh, which is why it tells you that is 0.9, this is actually a very easy problem, isn't it? And the last one it tells you is 1.5. What are we talking about here then? What's going on? Why did they choose these three? Go ahead, say it. You said it right. That's right. One is hypo, one is hyper, and one is iso. That's why they did this. Should be obvious, I think, at this point. The first one, A, is what? Hypo. Hypo. In which in which direction is water going to move? No, well not into the cell. Why is it going to move into the cell? For those three reasons, that I'm not, I don't want to repeat again because I just keep repeating it, and maybe you guys have to keep repeating it. Maybe you guys have to keep putting on index cards or something. But you have to decide which side's hyper. This side's hyper. That side's hypo. We just said the solution's hypotonic. So the water's going to move towards the hyper. Water will move in the opposite direction. Sodium chloride would if it could. If sodium chloride cannot move, so water will move into the cell. And lastly, the last way is water will move along its concentration gradient. Water's higher outside than it is inside, so water will go in higher. Water's higher concentration of water outside than it is inside, so therefore the water will go into the cell. I don't care how you think of it. Again, just get it right on the test. Inside's 0.9. Outside's 0.9. What is it? Isotonic. Isotonic. Is water moving? No. No movement. And writing the correct answer will get you nothing, right? So make sure you're practicing these, because I'm not giving you any points for this. This is all about you understanding. Predict what will happen if re to the red blood cells in class Z. This is hypertonic. That's right. Now water's moving out. So in C, it's the cell is going to do what? Shrivel up. Right. Isotonic, no movement, nothing's going to happen. What's going to happen with the uh, with the hypotonic solution? Swell. Swelling. And so that's it. That's what happens. All right. I would like to go through some more of these. I'm not going to. I sent you the answers. This is what the setup we're going to use tomorrow. And I'm sorry, Wednesday, so when we do our dialysis lab, we're going to use this. This is a dialysis bag. Dialysis bags are used to, uh, to get solutes out of your blood that are poisonous, right? The waste out of your blood and make sure your oxygen, your iron, your vitamins all stay in. So we have these bags that are very, they're, they're permeable to uh, water, but not permeable to other things. So we, we trap, we trap your solutes that are in your blood. Yeah. So
So hypotonic means it's less concentration of solids on the outside, and hypotonic means it's more concentration of solids on the inside. If I heard you right, hypotonic, less concentration of solute. It depends on what they say, right? So read the problem. If they say this uh, cell is placed in a hypotonic solution, what does that mean? There's more, there's more water on the outside. There's more water on the outside, less solute on the outside. That's what it means. Then you have to worry, is it permeable or not? So you have to be careful, because sometimes they'll write something like, well, the cell is hypertonic, and the cell matrix is hypertonic to the solution. Oops, you see what I'm saying? So in general, if they don't specify, if they tell you that the solution is hypertonic and the cell is this, you saw with the YouTube, they can say side A is hypertonic to side B, right? So they can say it all kinds of ways. The only thing you have to remember is whatever side they tell you in the problem, hypertonic means higher concentration of solute, lower concentration of water. Because remember, it's all a percentage. So if I can, I'll come back and work on some of these with you. Um, and we can maybe look at some of these cell, some of these actual problems. Because I'd like to go through and talk to you a little bit about the other part of the, the, the test, active transport uh, and passive transport, which we talked about yesterday. You had a you had a, an assignment that was due today. It looks like this. Right? It's due today. Is that correct? You just literally held up the sheet of paper that I had in my hand and said this. Okay. He wanted you to see that. I saw that. I saw that. Now. That's cute. I mean, I'm glad. I'm glad he cares. Some people don't care. So I'm glad he cares. I care. I do care that you did. I appreciate it. I, it is easy. That's why I'm giving. I'm giving you to you, right? But I. But kids freak out over the Greek letters, right? I know. But they, but kids. But kids. Yeah. They get, They see equations. Kids see equations. They freak out. So I'm like, look. I don't want to stress you out. It'll be extra credit. If you do it right, it'll be nice and easy. Hey, it's going to be the best test you ever had. Kids end up loving osmosis and diffusion in general because it really is not that hard is if you put in some time. So there's, uh, on page 107 of, of your assignment that was due today, is a great summary. You need to know all of that. What is Pat? It's a great um, graphic organizer. And it says passive transport on one side, and on the other side it says active transport. What are the three kinds of passive transport that we've talked about? Passive. passive. Diffusion. And that, what is diffusion exactly? In a nutshell. That's right. High to low. That's it. No extra energy required. Are you going to post this video? Yeah. Just that easy. What about facilitate diffusion? That's right. Very good. It's going to use a protein in the membrane. And is it is it going to use any extra energy? Nope. It's still diffused. That's why it's passive. It's high to low. No extra energy. Now, I shouldn't have to do this. You should know this already because it was in the part of the homework and it was due this morning. But I'm going to go over it. So then what's the last passive transport that we talked about? Osmosis. Osmosis. So we talked about this. Anything else is what? Active. Active. So again, this is from high to low. And no extra energy.
Now, with active transport, what do you got? So do we have to know the two different types of endocytosis? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. You have to know all four of those answers. Of what There's four types of active transports that we talked in this class that you, have, you, get, you need to know. So let's go through it. What are those four things that require extra energy to get things across the membrane? Yeah. The ion pumps. Ion pumps. And there's, there's a several kinds. We're going to go through each kind. Let me say all four of them. Well, let's go through ion pumps. Yeah, you can say all four kinds of active transport. Which are, By the way, what are you going to do when the ion pumps are doing what? Using extra energy. So you're using extra energy. And by the way, when I say extra energy, when we're talking about a cell, let's be clear on this. We're talking about ATP. If I want you to, if you're an adult with a job and a mortgage and I have a job, am I going to pay you in clamshells? Will you ex accept hot dogs as payment for a week's wage? No. In America, what do you expect to get paid in? Money. Money. Dollar. Currency. This is the cell's currency. The cell will accept it only under very extreme, in very special circumstances are, is anything else used. So if, you, if the cell is going to do anything, just like if you're going to do anything as an adult, as a kid, you're forced to do things. But as an adult, as an adult, if you're going to do anything for someone else at, on a regular basis where you need to get paid, you're going to you're going to get paid in the currency of the land. In a cell, that currency is ATP. So let's be clear on that. So ion pumps extra energy, so it's a, it needs ATP. And then what is uh, and what it, where is it going? High to low? No, low to high. Low to high. And I'll say this again. If you think about passive transport, think about something rolling downhill. No extra energy. All right, high to low. If you're thinking about active transport, Think, think about something rolling uphill. You need to put energy into it. Does that make sense? All right. Ion pumps. What's another thing that you have to be able, in order to get it done across the membrane, you have to use extra energy? Well, okay, endocytosis. Why, why do you need extra energy? Because we're trying to move larger particles. Uh, it's larger particles. And look, guys, please take a look at the exo and endocytosis page on page 106. I mean, the drawings are amazing. They have it labeled. There's really some really key uh, uh, diagrams. That you can see the major changes in the membrane. You're li you're literally reconstructing the cell membrane. You're taking it, you're, you're fusing two different membranes together, you're moving these molecules around, the cell is moving and, and fluctuating and changing its connections. All that requires a lot of energy. So you can imagine that, right? So with endocytosis, to, to, for that membrane, it, the, the whole membrane, the endoskeleton, everything, to move around it and take something in, it takes a tremendous amount of energy. Um, well, not tremendous, but it takes a lot of energy. So endocytosis, what is it? What kinds? What two, there's two different kinds. There's phagocytosis, and there's P-H-A-G-O cytosis. And what's the other one? That's right, pinocytosis. So pinocytosis is taking in large amounts of, of fluid. Large amounts of fluid is pinocytosis. Phagocytosis is a large amounts of solids. All 
Are we good with that? So both both are they have some subtle differences, but both are what active transport. They both use ATP, and they're both moving, of course, things from low to high. If something solid is outside, it's going to move it in. It's going to need this energy. So that's getting things in. Endo means in. So let's be clear on that. That's in. This is not taking things out. This is taking, bringing things in. What's the other? What's the other thing? Exocytosis. Exos, exo means like exoskeleton is the skeleton on the outside. To exit means to go outside. So exocytosis, cyto means cell, right? And cis means an activity. It's an activity to do what? Take, take things into or out of the cell. Out. Out. So this is out. And obviously this is just to get things out of the cell. That's it. All right. And they go through the Golgi body in general and then out. And we'll talk about that when we talk about it. What kinds of things would a cell want to get out of itself? Bacteria. Yeah. No? Bacteria actually does phagocytosis. The only cell, our cells, we have white blood cells that do the opposite. Our, why would a white blood cell want to take in a bacteria? Yeah, it's killing it. It's eating it. We eat the bacteria that come into us. That that zit that you pop that has all, all that white gook inside it, right? I mean, there's not a soul in this room that hasn't popped a zit on their face, so I don't want to hear it. That that zit that you popped on your face, that that white gook came out of it. That's your white blood cells. What's the, the dead white blood cells after they've eaten the bacteria? Yeah. It does release energy, yes. I should mention that, yeah. All these are active, right? So they all need, they all require energy. But I just want you to know that, that when a white blood cell attacks a bacteria, they eat the bacteria. They take it into, so they do phagocytosis. They take the, the cell, the bacteria in, and then they break it up, bless you. They chop it up into pieces. They're, they are seriously hardcore murderers. They, uh, they, they have all kinds of vesicles with bad blank enzymes that tear, they tear apart proteins and fats and there's not, nothing's left after a after phagocytic cell gets, gets, uh, gets a hold of it. I mean, that's what they do. They kill. They're killer cells. They're literally named killer cells. So you have those white blood cells in your body, all right? So that's endocyt that, that would be endocytosis. What, what, what kinds of things do you want to get out of the cell? Yeah. Viruses. viruses. Yeah. Well, again, if your white blood cells are attacking a virus, it's gonna it's gonna surround it, eat it, chop it up into pieces. It does not want your body does not want bacteria and and viruses to get out of anything. It wants them dead and chopped up. It doesn't even want just dead. It wants them broken apart to at the molecular level. That's what your body wants to do with those things. Anything that's in your body doesn't belong to you. Your body wants to destroy it to its, to its core. Yeah? Uh, when, when, we, when I was doing the packet on there, and it said example in the body, the example would be like when the pancreas Excellent. That's right. Your cells produce proteins. Your cells produce things. Your cells produce tears. Don't you cry? Where'd those tears come from? From cells. Your cells produce mucus. When you get a runny nose, it, that snot that comes out of your nose, where'd it come from? Where'd it come from? Cells. cells. The snot came from cells. Exocytosis. There's your, you eat a candy bar if you're healthy, if you're not diabetic, type 1 diabetic. You, your pancreas produces insulin to tell your cells to, to take in the sugar. How does the, does the insulin get into your blood? 
it leaves the cells. It leaves the pancreas cells. How does it leave? Exocytosis. Anything your body puts into the, into the bloodstream, this large amount, as it produces it, it's going to be exocytosis. Are we good? Yes? All right. So that's it. That's, that's, uh, that is the essence of, of active and passive diffusion, except that you're going to need to know those, you're going to need to know those, uh, those ion pumps. And you're going to need to understand how they work. So the ion pumps are coming. they got six minutes. That's the perfect amount of time for me to review those. And then that's it. Any questions you have, you can, hopefully you've got them answered today. There are three examples on ion pumps that were discussed. You need to know all three. Yeah. Don't you know the, the page we had, like, graphs? Would it be on our test? Yes. Like the surface area to volume will be on the test. I don't think I need to cover it. It's pretty straightforward relationship. If you did the homework, it's easy. Mm -hmm. If you have any questions, you can see me uh, during advisory. So make sure you get a pass. All right. So there's three kinds of pumps that are discussed in the, in the homework. You need to know all three, as I've said to you numerous times. Of course, these are active transports. These are ion pumps. Ion pumps are a form of just the word pump. What do you think? What do you think of when you when you think of a pump? Huh? Energy. energy. I think of energy. I, of course, I'm an old school. I, I'm a kid that when he rode his bike, he didn't have a air a plug-in air pump. He had to sit there with and pump it himself. So I remember the sweat and energy required to pump in the tire. So ion pumps, pumps require energy. So you have a membrane. There's your membrane. Remembering that the inside is hydrophobic and the outside is hydrophilic. Just for argument's sake, trying to remember that always, OK? You have in the center, you have this this protein that sits in the center of, of the membrane and it's going to allow things to move in that normally would not move in. What are the kinds of things that normally don't come into the cell on their own? They're, what are they? Glucose. Right, but what are, what are the qualities of those things? Oh, like large. Large, very good. Nonpolar. Non oh wait, not nonpolar. Oops. Polar. And what's the other thing? Ions. Ions don't move easily through the membrane. So to get ions in, we have these things called ion pumps, and they're constantly moving from low to high. These are very, 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 very important. We're going to cover these when we do uh, the electron transport chain. We need this high to this low to high. We need to spend some energy. We're using ATPs being used up. ATP gets made trees into ADP. And that's to get this ion from this low to this high. So low to high. We need to do that so that further on down the membrane, we can have it move in the opposite direction. We need that high potential. We're creating a battery. High positives on one side means high negative on the other. Where do you see a plus on one side and negative on the other? Where do you see it? On a battery. You're creating a battery when you do this. This is, in essence, the first natural, this is a natural battery. All right, so you're storing the energy. When you're pumping it, you're taking this ATP, it's losing it, you're using energy to pump this, make this high potential space out here. So you have another, further down, another kind of pump that we call, this is a very important pump, very ex classic example of an active transport. And we call this thing, what, does anybody know? Uh, that, this one was a proton pump, the first one was a proton pump. Sodium potassium pump is right. So you're right that this was a, a proton pump. This one's called a proton Pump. And again, we will be coming back to this. Again, we're going to come back to all of these. 
So if you don't learn them now, that's okay. I told your parents, they, don't, they mess up a test, they don't learn it the first time. That's right, they'll see it again. Proton pumps are required for you to understand electron transport chain and, and uh, what goes on in making energy. But then in the second one, in the second example here, you have sodium, the sodium potassium pump. That's because potassium K ion is going into the cell. Of course, this is high, the cell is high potassium inside. And so high potassium means it's going to be hard for it to go. This is low potassium outside. You need what? You need ATP. And what, what the cell does is it, it, it combines the use of that ATP. It doesn't want to be wasteful. So while it's bringing in potassium, what's it doing? It's taking out sodium. Do you see how you're changing ATP to ADP? That's where the energy went. All right. So then, of course, sodium is going out, Na plus is going out. And Na plus is high outside and low inside. And the last one is this co-transporter. This co-transporter is kind of crazy. Uh, God, it's screaming. You have to remember with this co-transporter that what it's doing is this, this is what I'm talking about. You're creating this high outside sodium, so high sodium comes in, and you're using that movement of sodium here to bring what in with it. The glucose comes in with it. Now this glucose comes in, but the only reason it comes in is because of the sodium. But why does the sodium drive that? Because it's made high and it was made high by this sodium potassium pump. So this is a form of, this is a co, what, what we call co-transport. Tra you transport glucose and sodium at the same time. This is a carrier protein, but understand there's no ATP used directly here, but it is still, it is still an active transport uh, because you're still moving from low to high and you're using the energy from what? The energy used here to move all this. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. You're using the energy of the concentration gradient, that, that potential that you put into the battery, you're using it here to move that sugar into the cell as well. All right. Well, good luck. I hope this made sense. Tomorrow's a test. <laughs>